Hello, Guardians. Today is May 26th, 2023. My name's Danfinity, and welcome to Destiny Digest. couple of notes before we jump into the rest of the program here. Thank you so much to everybody who listened to the podcast over the past couple of weeks. Thank you to Above TP, to Granddad Gaming, to Talk Cordy to me, to Epic Dan, to Legal LaFlash, to Very Small Hat, and Ascendant Nomad, and Producer Azefa for uh, giving of their time and energy to be on the past two panels for PvP and PvE. It's really meant a lot to me. I feel like they were really good conversations. And something to chew on as we get into this new season of the deep. Also, uh, I've had the pleasure this week to announce that I am a part of Power GPU's creator program, meaning that if you use my code Dan at checkout at power.gpu, you can save fifty dollars in labor costs for your next PC build. Whether picking out the pieces for a scratch build or getting one of their mini ready mades, Power GPU has you covered. They're an awesome company and somebody that I'm thrilled to be working with in this space. They not only do a lot for their creators, but they also do a lot for their community. Once again, head on over to power.gpu for your next build. Use code Dan for $50 off the labor costs. Now, enough about me. Let's get into the news of the week. Like I said earlier in the show, this week has been huge for Bungie. Not only did we have Season of the Deep drop on Tuesday, but we also had two trailers in the PlayStation Showcase, one for Destiny 2 Final Shape. That trailer is something else entirely. Uh, they brought back Cade, I guess? I've said for years that Cade 6 was the Mickey Mouse of the Destiny 2 franchise. Well, now they're bringing Mickey back. Uh, this time, it feels way more gritty with uh, a seeming light emanating from his eyes. Sans Ghost in this strange new frontier on possibly the other side of the portal that the witness opened during Lightfall. The implications are huge and I'm excited to see what happens on August 22nd. But that's not all. Bungie also announced their new slash renewed franchise Marathon, which will be an extraction shooter that will be releasing sometime soon. The trailer looked awesome. The music was Banger. There was also a huge community ARG that revealed the Vidoc for the game. It's just a really exciting time to be a Bungie fan. It's a really exciting time to be a Destiny fan. My interest is incredibly piqued for Marathon. I'm not normally a PvP guy. I don't know if you picked that up from the podcast so far. But uh, this looks like it could have some real legs if Marathon takes off. I like the energy that we're getting from Bungie in that regard. And we all know that Bungie is really good at hyping up the community around it. Which brings me back to Season of the Deep. Season of the Deep released on Tuesday with a bunch of changes across the game. We're not going to touch on everything here. I will be including links to articles in the show notes. Returning to Titan has been a ton of fun. While it's not a completely explorable space, I'm really impressed by how they brought Titan back into Destiny 2. That first mission was incredible. Uh, probably the best opening mission to a season in recent memory. Not only do we have a familiar location, but we also hear an unfamiliar voice in the rageful Zivu Arath. They seem to be taking a note from what they did with Savathun and really building her up uh, possibly over the season. I don't know if we'll see her by the end of the season or if that's a multiple season arc thing, but I'm excited nonetheless. I've liked Salvage as a menagerie style activity. I liked the deep dives from what I've played of them so far. When we originally played the Veil mission on Tuesday, my fire team and I uh, were whelmed by it, not understanding that it also was a week to week quest that will be building on itself over the season of the deep. I've also been having a lot of fun farming last wish for all those weapons. Helpful note here too, by the way, uh, if you grab the quest from Hawthorne, uh, oh, Deep Sight Mine, and you complete Last Wish, you can do that every week, regardless of if Last Wish is a pinnacle raid. Not only that, but the red borders that come from that quest count as two patterns 
for the weapons that drop. I feel like they're doing a lot with systems to make them more rewarding. They are changing up a little bit of how we interact with the helm. The fish tank's a huge thing. Fishing is amazing. There's still some week by week lockouts that I'm not a huge fan of. A lot of folks from the community are pointing out that they didn't put them as a vendor at the helm, but instead put them as triumphs, which, you know, doesn't feel great. But overall, I've been enjoying a lot of my experiences in Season of the Deep. By the time you're hearing this, you might have even adventured into the new dungeon, Ghost of the Deep. I don't have the day off on Friday, so I won't be in at launch, but I will be playing later on in the evening. Dungeon and raid release days are always a hype time for me, and I'm sincerely hoping that the dungeon takes place in the Arcology. It's one of my favorite locations in the entire game. Shameless plug here, if you are looking for a clear of Ghosts of the Deep, I will be live on Sunday on twitch.tv forward slash Danfinity, helping Guardians through all kinds of activities. No doubt that that's going to be the hot commodity for the day, but uh, come on through, we'll get you a clear. We'll have a fun time. From the TWAB, we did get a few important dates coming down the pike. Season 21 Trials of Osiris goes live this weekend. The first Iron Banner of Season 21 starts on Tuesday, May 30th. Grandmaster Nightfalls start early on June 13th. And Solstice brings its sunny celebration to the game of Destiny 2 on July 18th. That should carry us through all the way to the August 22nd end of the season mark. I've enjoyed Solstice in the past. Uh, I kind of took a break during season 20 uh, toward the back end, so I missed all of the Guardian Games stuff. But Solstice has always been kind of like an overpowered time. So looking forward to that. Arc is incredibly strong. I, I could go on and on and on about all of the amazing things that have happened uh, so far just this week. But we have an interview to get to. This week, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Rick from Blueberries.gg. Blueberries.gg is a website that hosts guides and informatics, all sorts of things for new players to Destiny 2, even veteran players. And Rick has been cultivating that site over the past couple of years. It was a pleasure to sit down with him on Wednesday to talk about Blueberries.gg, and I hope you enjoy this interview. Hey, Rick from Blueberries.gg. Welcome to Destiny Digest. Thank you so much uh, for joining today. How you doing? Doing uh, good. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, a little. We were. <laughs> we've been talking for a few minutes now, and you said that this is your first time on the show or on any show. On any show. Well, hey, welcome. I hope that you this brings you many more appearances at uh, more prestigious places <laughs> and <laughs> and uh thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you today uh um, no, it's it's my pleasure um so rick why don't you tell people um where they can find you on the internet introduce yourself uh what you do in the community where they can find you on the internet because sometimes people don't make it all the way through episodes yeah, yeah, good point. So <laughs> I honestly, no, no one knows me. I would say personally, mm -hmm. and it's it's normal. I would say because I run a website, and those tend to be less personal than, for example, a, a YouTube channel or or a, or a Twitch channel. So I run Blueberries dot mm -hmm. So that's the main place where I do my stuff, and I'm also on Twitter, Blueberries GG. And well, basically that's it. You know, I, I we, we have a, a YouTube channel that we kind of try to develop, but mm -hmm. it's not that active, to be honest. So everything is going on on the website. That's where we put our guides. And again, people are, don't often connect me as a, as a person, you know, with, mm -hmm. with the site. And in a sense, it's, it's okay. Because we have more like guides. We have other people also writing for the website. And that's where everything is happening. So it's it's kind of like a veil in, of anonymity. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get and to put on, on a mask so, uh, and then take it off as you see fit. <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, it's not on purpose. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it's part of the of the medium of, of writing, mm -hmm. opposed to even podcasting, because, you know, you, you can hear the voice of the person and so on. So I guess it comes with the territory. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've been running blueberries.gg for a while now. Um, I know, I've known about you for at least a few years and have pointed, yeah. pointed new players to your guides 
when they've come into chat and they've been like, hey, like, what do I do? Like, how do I do this thing? Uh, usually, like, you're a pretty good uh, space to send people to. So how would you get into writing guides for Destiny? Well, before we get there, how did, how did you get into Destiny 2? Huh. Well, I... As opposed to most of, uh, I, I would I would imagine, as opposed to most of your guests, I'm not a alpha D1 player, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was okay. invited to the private alpha and so on. I actually played Destiny for a for a few months when it was first released. Mm -hmm. Destiny 2, because I'm I'm on, only on on PC, no mm -hmm. no consoles. I played I don't know, six months, seven months. And uh, by that time, I had a crappy PC, and my first kid was on the way. Mm -hmm. So I kind of drifted off. It, it was not a great place for Destiny 2 also. It was, you know, at the time when uh, Curse of Osiris was releasing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was playing on a, on a Mac. I was streaming it. It was a little messy, so I, I liked it, but I, I just got, you know, I got distracted by other things. Mm -hmm. And then I took a big break, and I came back when Shadowkeep released. Okay. And at that point, I, I really become, you know, obsessed, finding myself playing as much as I could. I, I actually bought a PC. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I built a PC um, pretty much for Destiny. And I found myself, you know, watching, playing. And when I could not play because I was working and I was on the toilet, I would go to YouTube and watch videos about Destiny. It's like, okay. Yeah. So That's I where I watch my YouTube and... videos, too. <laughs> <laughs> the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that we're not the, the only ones. I'm no, sure. no, no, no. Write, so it, write how, a review. That's... Write a review saying where you watch your YouTube videos. Anyway. There you go. And I've been there, and I've been hooked since since then. Heck yeah! So what what spoke to you about Destiny Two? Well, you know, I am I played a lot of Halo at the time, mm -hmm. so I, you could say that I'm a, an FPS fan. So Halo, mm -hmm. then some Call of Duties. Never like a hardcore guy. Mm -hmm. If you ever see me play, I'm I'm pretty okay. I'm not great by any means. I'm okay. And I also had a phase in my life of, you know, of a World of Warcraft obsession. Mm -hmm. And Destiny somehow was more or less in between the two, right? You're right. Kind of an MMO, FPS first, but an MMO still. So, yeah, you know, it hooked me. Yeah. For years, I was wondering, why does, doesn't any, anyone do this, you know, a proper MM, MMO FPS? And then I realized, actually, that's Destiny. <laughs> and that's how I came back and uh, haven't looked back. Heck yeah, that's wonderful. So, what was the impetus for uh, for blueberries.gg? Hmm. Uh, it's, it's it's going to reflect my my obsessive nature sometimes. <laughs> but I was you know watching all these videos, mm -hmm. and it's, it's great. But I, but I was getting lost. You know, they keep keep uh, listing listing weapons and guard rolls and so on. And I was like, okay, give me a second. Let me put up a Google sheet mm -hmm. and just like. Write, write it down, right? Understand what's what and try to have my, my own little database. In parallel, I started uh, a gaming site a long time ago that is still alive. It's called Mac Gamer HQ because I was mostly on Mac. Mm -hmm. It's still around, so that was 10 years ago. And I've been running that on and off, not too intensive, but still. So I kind of knew the environment. Mm -hmm. To me, when I started Blueberries GG, it was not new to publish on the web, to create a website, and to basically create, creating guides, it was not new. So I, was, I had that site, but it was not doing that great. It was, it was okay. Mm -hmm. And I was getting bored with, um, with it. Then COVID came. So I'm a, mm -hmm. a, a COVID case. COVID came, and, and I had a, my, my first uh, child was already here. And with my wife, we would have, um, you know... Um, Everyone would have a turn. Like you, you have an hour for the afternoon. Yeah. You have an hour for the morning, and vice versa. And I was playing Destiny every time that I could. You know, I was <laughs> yeah. only playing Destiny. And I realized, you know what? I spent so much time playing, and at the same time, I'm I'm still having this itch to create something. The other side, I'm I'm just you know burned out after years. Why don't I just try something? And the thing that really surprised me was that on YouTube. I think we could say that the Destiny 2 is pretty much saturated. There's yeah. so many channels, so many huge content creators, especially now. I mean, at the time, lots of those guys had, I don't know, 100,000 followers, uh, subscribers, and so on. Mm -hmm. Most of them have like 500 now. 
or so or like in a million kind of, exactly <laughs> yeah exactly so and i realized there was not a lot of written stuff mm -hmm. and that's the thing that i was doing also on the side just to keep track of of stuff you know like undying came out what are the proper undying weapons which one should i farm and i was lost you know so i, I was doing my google sheets and i said you know what let's let's use covid because i was i was in some it was a partial layoff i don't mm -hmm. know how you call this in english but basically i was still an employee yeah but we just had no work yeah so i had all this free time and i said you know what let's let's, let's just try it. let's see and he actually started to pick up really fast mm -hmm. and uh here i am <laughs> yeah I, when I think of like when I think of blueberries.gg, you're right. It is one of the only like websites that has guides to it. Um, outside of like, I think your major competitors are like Gamespot and Kotaku. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. Like your main your main but, competitors are these huge are these huge sites, and you're you're but one guy at the time. You said that you have more people contributing to the website now. Um, how does it feel to produce it on? on this scale where it is, where it is a trusted sor source for the community. Um, and you're now pulling from, from multiple be different people. You know, it's a, it's a really interesting place because as you're saying, YouTube, it's just saturated. There's mm -hmm. like so much people and really good people that are great gamers and are great at what they do. I could not even dream of, of creating as good content in video. So I was like, not even trying. Mm -hmm. And then you had on the um, on the website side, basically the only one that I that I found was uh, Destiny Planet, for example, that yeah. you know, <laughs> that yeah. you know well. Yeah, Otherwise, I, I happen to know Planet Destiny quite well. Yeah, I happen <laughs> to know a little bit of that. <laughs> was that when I was looking for information, I didn't really trust the big sites mm -hmm. because I was like, yeah, so these guys, and and I know that from my background doing other gaming sites, that these guys have staff okay and they really try to go with the games that have a player base mm -hmm. so they can get views and unlike uh, following for example fallout or, or another guy like that that you know is legit right mm -hmm. you never know how if, if those sites are i mean you never know if the writers behind those sites are legit or not mm -hmm. so i said there's something missing something missing and it's also intimidating that's also why i think there's not a lot of uh people doing what we're doing because mm -hmm. you have to compete with all these huge sites. And in the end, even if the people writing them are not big destiny players, they still write for huge websites and they have a lot of authority, a lot of, uh, a lot of readers. So when you're small, you basically get drowned out mm -hmm. by, by those guys. And I think the only way, the only reason why we kind of found a footing is because I had some experience on, on those type of situations. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at a little less now, but at the time, I would publish maybe once every two weeks, three weeks. Mm -hmm. Unlike many of, of the, I would say, traditional sites that are trying to post many times per day. Because I knew that I, if I was going to do something, it had to be quite uh, deep, mm -hmm. right? And not just a, a guide about the last mission that came out yesterday. Because even today, that the site is, is better known, I, I, ha I know I can't compete. Because mm -hmm. everyone's going to write about the new uh, season of the deep mission, right? Everyone. And you go to Google, you are in page four. There's no point. Yeah. So, so that's a little bit how I, uh, I found the, the, you know, the niche within the niche. Mm -hmm. So on, on a day like today, like we're, we're recording this literally the day after season of the deep dropped. <laughs> so I know, like, like I said, I don't want to keep you too long because I know you have a lot of work to do today. Um, so when a new season drops, what is what is your workflow from like, okay, I'm able to play this thing to I need to write the guide for it? Is it is it relatively quick? Are you writing while you're playing playing through the, the mission or you know it's it's all, honestly it's changing and it's a little bit more challenging now than before, but that's a good thing in the sense that before I would have only a few guides and I, I would say those are the ones that, that really helped us grow. For example, we, we put together an exotic tier list, mm -hmm. like really everything, but more like a, some sort of a table that you can filter. You can see the slots, you can see the, the, the elements and not just a big uh, word vomit, mm -hmm. right? 
And at the time, I, I only had a few of those. So a new season would not be too difficult because I really didn't have to change much. Mm-hmm. These days, we, we are trying to, to go for more types of, of topics. So the more content you have, the more you need to update. And Destiny is a living, is a living game. Yeah. And stuff can really become uh, re- uh, irrelevant rather quickly. Mm-hmm. So these days, when a new season comes, since I would say uh, the Witch Queen, wow, I spent perhaps the first week, uh, I, I, yeah, I played the campaign because mm-hmm. I, I need to see what's, what's going on. I play some of the seasonal just to see how it's working, take screenshots. But most of the time, I, I basically write or, or, or update. Mm-hmm. And lucky for me, early on, I found a guy, Sky Knight. So shout out to you. I think he was like my first post he, he commented on. So we've been you know, working together ever since. So I may be an average kind of gamer, but I have a few guys on the team that are really, really hardcore. So these days it's much easier. It's like, guys, help me out. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to find this thing. <laughs> I, I, How do I, I get I into want... the deep dive? <laughs> let, let, let's talk about Warlock builds. If I had to do it, it would be really hard and maybe mm-hmm. I would meet some stuff. But among, amongst them, there would be one of them who will be really like hardcore, yeah. day one, raids. Uh, they, w- they will make top, top 100 every now and then. So I, I know I can trust them, right? So I can, I can use my experience publishing on the web. And I know the game, so I, I, mean, I understand what's, what's up. Yeah. But I can, I can trust these guys to, to really be super accurate in, in ways that I, it would take me too long especially as I, I play less and less in a sense mm-hmm. <laughs> because of the site. Yeah. Isn't that the so irony? Cool. <laughs> Isn't that the it irony is. of making oh, anything on the internet for your hobby? <laughs> but I, I, I gotta say, I, I know I, 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 used to, I love, you know, having my little site and taking care yeah. of it. It's, it's great. It's really wonderful. Um, that, it, that reminds me of like when I was on, on PD, I'm not the most well versed in like trials or anything like that. I'm I'm not a huge builds guy either, so it was always helpful to have like Nim or TBL or Moon around that each had their specific or crit buff. Crit buff was huge. Uh, Jarv yeah. as well, uh, who all had their specific niche of what they did either on the site or on the podcast to kind of rely on. So that's got to be like a really cool uh, environment that you built over there. Um, so speaking of the new season, uh, we have a lot of new lights that have come in to Destiny 2, not only with Lightfall, but with Season of the mm-hmm. Deep. Um, what are a few tips that you would suggest to new players uh, who are just getting into the game? Where would you point them uh, as, as far as getting into activities? That, that's, a, that's a great question. And it's such a shame that it's such a hard question to answer, even mm-hmm. for people like us. Who know the game a lot it's really hard to to point people to to the right place i tried to to bring to onboard a, a friend a real life friend into destiny and I, I just couldn't do it well then other things got in the way but it was yeah. really hard it was just before a light fall in just explaining the the armor the armor uh, the armor mod yeah systems when you don't even have armors uh, armor mods and he was getting killed you know we were playing the witch queen uh, campaign on, on legendary Mm-hmm. And he was getting nuked all over the place, and I'm like, yeah. At the same time, I I, I was optimized to the <laughs> everything was optimized. So it's like, how you do that? And I'm, I don't know, man. I'm just <laughs> volatile, exploding everything. And he was like, what? What is going on? <laughs> yeah. So it, it is really hard. So I, I I do think that with Lightfall, they they simplified some stuff to the detriment of of more uh, regular players, perhaps. Mm-hmm. But I would say, well, you have to do the the new light quest mm-hmm. for what is worth, even if even if it is not great. And unfortunately, if you, if you want to get hooked and do something, you need to use an external site mm-hmm. or resource, definitely. Because the new light quest doesn't go that far. So you do that, great. You can do some, uh, some, some, uh, some playlist activities, perhaps, just to you know, get, get your bearings, do some Vanguard stuff and so on. Mm-hmm. And then I would recommend getting of the game and, and trying to find a good resource, we put together a, a PDF guide that is called the Beginner's Guide that has been well received. Mm-hmm. And it's what it's five pages. So it just explains more or less the the archetypes, the, the slots, what activities there are, because when you're new, you open the director, you, you just get lost. I mean, just mm-hmm. so much to do. So I would say 
get something like that just to try to understand the game and I, I, it may sound simplistic but i would say my first my biggest advice is try to put together a build mm -hmm. because even myself for a long time i was just playing without really understanding the depth of of the game mm -hmm. once you put put together a build even if it's an if it's an easy one and you see how how you can you can become three times more powerful just because you have a coherence in the way you're playing around mm -hmm. this around you know a loop i think that can that can you know be the click in the oh okay so i see what why this game is is good so i would say do that play the play the seasonal if you have purchased it and perhaps if i could give people that are new and that do not want to pay for the expansion yet something to to aim for it would be prophecy dungeon mm -hmm. try to work towards that watch the guides and try to find an lfg saying i'm new i need someone you'll eventually find someone and try to tackle that i would say that's the the most accessible end game content that you can try and i think it's pretty cool heck yeah well, how are you enjoying season of the deep so far how <laughs> how much have you been able to play that's a trick question right <laughs> <clears throat> i i played i think i played three hours so far yeah I played just a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. So um, honestly, I have not much to say. I was trying to not have work today to have more time to play and, and mm -hmm. update some stuff. I could not do it. So I spend more, most of my free time when I can going to Twitter and so on. And, and to be honest, I'm kind of disappointed so far from mm -hmm. what I'm seeing, such as, for example, all the, the changes to Eververse. Okay. The fact that there are even less stuff that you can get by, with, with Bright Dust. Mm-hmm. Overall, I would say I'm I'm quite positive as a guy when it comes to Destiny. Mm -hmm. You'll never see me complain about about stuff. Not that there is anything to complain, but I, I, it's not my style. But this time, I see the changes, and it really feels like yeah, not yeah. really happy with that. So I haven't played that much, but the, the things that I'm hearing, I'm not a big fan of. Mm. You mentioned that Lightfall was a so a big increase in player base. Mm -hmm. And definitely, I, I like to keep track of that. I have a, a small table in which I, I have the daily average players for de for uh, for Steam. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Lightfall was insane. And from what I can see right now, it's it's not at all the, the peak that I was I was expecting. Obviously, mm -hmm. not as big as Lightfall, but every new season, just a huge peak. The, the figures, the numbers are not that impressive so far. So we'll see how this uh, season pans out. So I know uh, a couple of weeks back, you you posted that. And and one of my thoughts was like what the general player base overall across console and and everything was. Do you often track that, or is it just the Steam Steam numbers? It's it's mostly the Steam because the only way that I that I have that I have found to track across platforms would be through um through the through the you know the the, the Charlemagne Charlemagne okay bots. yeah. But as far as I know, you can just do it for today. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done it you know every day. Yeah. Otherwise, if you do it every day and you keep track of it, you you would know. Mm -hmm. But I don't have the data, so I can just uh, I can just grab Steam. Yeah, and I think it's 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 a relevant way of of looking at things. And uh, when I posted that, everyone was like, "Ah, oh, you're just uh, trying to get views." Obviously, there will be less <laughs> players and so on. I know that, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, how how fast you get new players and how fast are you losing players? Obviously, mm. there will be ups and downs. And right now, it seems like the ups are not that that big. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. I, How about yourself? How are you liking the new season? So I got in yesterday, like the servers were down for, for a considerable yeah. amount of time yesterday. <clears throat> uh, they did warn about that, but you know, we, I, I got, I started streaming at four after sitting in queue probably since one or something yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, but, but as soon as I started stream, I was like, all right, we're going to do, we're going to read some articles. We're going to read like s some of Twitter just to like kind of wind things up. And it came up like right after I hit the go live button. So I was, I was able to hop in, uh, and play through the, the opening mission. I liked the opening mission, uh, quite a bit. Um, I like what they've done with the helm space and, and the activity that we're doing. I think that that's the, the story is unique more so than what, um, than what I felt defiance was, but with defiance being an opening season, that's, that will be what it will be. Yeah. Um, some of the systems in the background of like still time gating, uh, the content I'm not still not a huge fan of, 
Uh, but I I am looking forward to seeing where this story goes, especially when Zivu Orath is involved, and we now yeah. have a voice to that character. So that is true. Yeah. Um, true. No, the, the first mission it was was very nice. I also liked it. Yeah. The um the la- the changes the, the last fresh- wish. The changes yeah. the last wish. Those are cool. I like if you could if we could just do that for Hawthorne forever <laughs> for every raid that comes up. That is great. D- just being able to like pick up those weapon the red borders not from the raid itself from the from the last chest itself but from a specific vendor and especially with Hawthorne not really doing anything in the tower other than yeah. saying hey <laughs> and, did they change did they change the dialogue or does she still talk about the I, red war <laughs> i think she I, look look man i don't really pay attention to much of what anybody says anymore I, I i just show up and i'm like do you have the thing that i need you have the thing that i need cool neat and or that you don't i'm on to the next one <laughs> so but the last wish changes i i like that you can do that week in and week out without it being um the uh pinnacle raid of that of that week so that's yeah definitely that's very cool so yeah i don't know i I, we're just we're we're only a couple days in fishing is a big thing for me too i caught an exotic fish on the second throw of my of my uh pole (laughs) have you have you gone fishing yet not not even that's so sad (laughs) it's so fun i I would be doing it right now but i i I but you're here I'm sorry. I'm to sorry. With you. No, it's, <laughs> honestly, it's, it's my pressure. It's my pressure. It's good to be here. And as I was saying, you know, in in the before we we go we we went live. This is my first interview, right? mm-hmm. and uh, I'm not I'm not even an English na- native speaker, so it's an interesting uh, exercise for yeah. me. So I hope it's fine. Oh yeah, we'll you see doing great. We'll see the comments. <laughs> oh, well, dude, Rick, thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it greatly. Uh, why don't you tell the fine folks at home where they can find you on the internet, sir? Yes. So uh, you can find me on blueberries.gg. And uh, I try to, to have the most important, uh, I would say, guides on, mm-hmm. the, on the front page. So you should be able to see it. It's not like a, a blog feed with the latest. But there's also that. But you will see the, the big things that we, that we do, like uh, the last, last sector rotations. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot of databases within the the site, which I think also helped us get some followers. A lot of databases, so you can see what's what. You can filter per day, per the rotations. We follow them. We keep track of everything. Everything is done manually, by the way. Mm-hmm. Which on the on the plus side means that when there's an issue with the servers, I'm not impacted because everything is manual. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, <that's good. clears throat> so you can go there. Otherwise, uh, on Twitter, uh, we we we. I've been really pushing, trying to get Twitter, you know, to, to be to be kind of useful for for blueberries. Mm-hmm. So you can also find it there. I'm more and more active, and uh, those, those will be the two places. My name is Dan Finity. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and the TikTok at Dan Finity, where the eyes are else. You can also find me on Twitch, three days a week. Twitch.tv forward slash Dan Finity, helping guardians out with end game content. If you'd like to support the show, remember to rate and review on your podcast platform of choice. Anything you say helps us in the algorithm. If you'd like to support monetarily, head on over to coffee.com forward slash Danfinity. That is ko-fi.com forward slash Danfinity. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you find what you're grinding for.